I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say we are currently in the golden era for, for shortstops. I am really excited to watch the growth and development of these younger guys. Five ball, onto the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! What a game, what a moment. What is up, my friends? Happy Monday, everybody. It is the first Monday of the new month. So we're going to have our first team of the month of the season, player of the month as well. Overreaction Monday, we're going to talk about Luisa Rise being traded to the Padres. We're going to talk about this current class of shortstops in the big leagues, the AL Central, and we'll have power rankings to finish it all off, a new top 10 Major League Baseball power rankings with definitely some uh, some movement this week. So, Alex, we got a fun show. Uh, new week. How was the weekend? What, do anything fun? Of course you did. Oh, Festival Alex I, was back. I know. I had... S- I had a wild weekend. I'm so tired. I had a lot of big moments for people in my life that I love. But Festival Curry is back in action. And we talked about it last week. Beach Life Festival, which I was trying to get you to come out to, is the big festival in the South Bay. Um, You didn't try very hard. I never got a text. Nothing. I asked if... No, you I said try. you should go. You, You're like, you eh. said you should. Okay, go. okay, yeah, yeah. That that's on me. I should. I'm gonna get you in next time. That's a yeah. that's a promise. So yeah, I, I got to go Friday, which was the first photo up here on the wall. And then Saturday was a big day because my husband played main stage and just like absolutely crushed it and it was like a really cool full circle moment because we were born and raised in the south bay it was like he's played a lot of big shows but this was probably the biggest like in the south bay with like all of our friends and family in the crowd everyone chanting his name like it was that's cool it was so i was like happy tears like on side stage like full full that and then yeah again sister's baby shower i had a lot i had a lot of family stuff this weekend I feel like you live a double life sometimes (laughs) i don't get it tell me tell me you're just Hi, I'm Alex. I work in sports. I talk baseball. I talk other sports. I, I do sports. Yeah. And then you're just at like festivals and like yeah. thriving there. I know. It's, like, it's my two lives. Yeah, my husband's a musician. I don't know. And that, I work Alex. in sports. I don't know. And that, he's Alex. not a big sports guy, so it's like perfect. Like it's like it's funny. It's like it's always been that way. Yeah. We've been together almost 18 years. So Long it time. just it works. Yeah. Enough about me. Can we talk about your whole vibe going on here today? Because we sure can. <laughs> Here. We sure can, yeah. You look like you should be at a festival. Your hair Do is I? matching your whole, like, Top Gun vibe shirt right now. You are a whole, like, I'm into this, Ben. This is this is a new-looking Ben. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really know what's yeah. happening. I know I've grown my hair out for a, a while. Uh, grown my hair out for a while. I, I wanted to start doing some different things yeah. and you know, like I, I, I don't, I don't know actually, you don't know, but I wanted to like go up and just like have this, like, I don't, I don't know. So we were getting hair and makeup done and hair is just like slicks it straight back. Like I'm about to hop on a plane to meet my mob in, in Italy and we have a meeting. I don't know. I but love it. We're here. It's going to make me smile. It's slicked back. All show. All show. <laughs> If you're, if you're not watching or just listening, too. just know it is slicked back. And when you, it, it, is, it, is, it is gelled slick back. And hard. by slicked back, I mean <laughs> slick and back. That yeah. is, it's just. Yeah. That is not an overreaction. No, it's not. But let's jump into our first segment because it is Monday and it is time for Overreaction Monday. And we had some huge movement this weekend, you guys. So let's start with. <laughs> Ben can't stop touching his hair. <laughs> okay. We're going to start with the big trade this weekend because the back-to-back batting champ is now on the Padres. So our first overreaction statement, Luis Arise makes the Padres a playoff team. Uh, I'm going to say that is not an overreaction. Yeah. I do think Luis Arise. You know, I was already on the like once they added Dylan Cease. I'm yeah. like, this is this team should they should be good enough to make the playoffs. And then they go out and add Luis Arise, who's hitting. You know, he went, goes four for five in his debut. He's hitting over 300 on the year after a slower start. And everybody was like, what's what's going on with Luis Arise? All that dude does is hit. Well, he's hitting like 400 over the last. A uh, couple of weeks, and the guy's raking. I, I really like this addition to the lineup. 
Uh, it definitely lengthens the lineup yeah. a lot. It's a great addition for them. It's a it's a guy that you can put at the top of the lineup, and you just know he's going to get on base. Yeah. And I think that's huge for that lineup, especially with a guy, you know, right now, Tatis is a guy that's not a, a high average guy, but he can drive the ball. So uh, to have a that different feel in the lineup and just have a big high on base percentage guy, I really like that. I really like the pickup for them. Again, he went four for five in his mm-hmm. debut, batting 315 on the year now. So I'm going to say this is not an overreaction with the, the rotation they have. I know Musgrove's down right now. Uh, they had won four in a row coming into Sunday. We got to get rid of Matt Waldron. We got to. We got to. Four in a row. Team's looking good. They got some good offense going on Sunday. Matt Waldron gives up like five in the first couple innings. Not good. Other than that, team's good. I like them. Mm -hmm. This really Mm -hmm. lengthens that lineup. And they didn't give up a ton. They did not give up a ton to do it. I mean, Luis Arise got the best end of this deal, right? He's like the back-to-back batting champion. Obviously, we saw in his debut, absolutely went off. But now he's in a situation and on a team that I thought even before he was there, beginning of the season, that the Padres were going to be a playoff team. Now you add a batting champion who's one of the best hitters in the game. Like, he is going to get on base. He is going to get the ball in play. And being surrounded by the lineup that they already have in San Diego, this is an incredible situation for Luis Arise. Yeah, I don't. Two-time bat, back-to-back back years to back. winning a batting title, one in the American League, one in the National League, and now a, a month into the year, you're, you're getting traded away from the Marlins, who traded for you, and really didn't get all that much in, in return. I, in my opinion, um, you know, they, the um, Marlins end up getting uh, head in the deal, suck go in the deal from the oh Padres. And I, I knew I would. I just knew Alex wasn't going to be able to get no, through. No, 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 no. The, the, number, the number six prospect for the Padres on the move. He's the big get Being for the Marlins in this trade. Being an adult. Uh, I mean, how a, bad of a look is this Alex, for I'm the not Mar- done. You like, can how bad it. of a look is this for the Marlins, right? Like, I, he was their best asset, and he did, like, they, they did not get a haul. At all, I the so he was the number six, the number six prospect. It's Dylan Head. He's a doesn't have the best. I, I don't think he's a five tool player at any point, but he's yeah. one of the fastest guys in minor league baseball on a scale the scale to, to eighty uh, baseball players already. He's got a seventy grade. He's seventy grade in speed. Um, you, you hope the hitting tool comes around because you can't steal first base. But Dylan Head is the big acquisition here. Um, so and, and then you add on top of that that. The Marlins are paying down his deal to big league minimum. Like, so that's insane. the Padres are only paying him big league minimum to get it. I, I, I just make this make sense. I, I don't get it. The Padres are getting close to eight million. So they get Luisa Rise, they're getting eight million dollars, and yeah. they're giving up their number six prospect and a guy that they paid four million dollars to bring over uh, from Korea, and he hasn't been very good, and he's down in double A right now. I, I don't know. Padres win this trade for yeah. sure. Luis Arise, great addition, not an overreaction. This does, in my opinion, make the make the Padres a, a playoff team. So I mean, this on top of it too is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Marlins president of baseball operations, uh, Peter Bendix. This was his response to the Luis Arise trade. We are unlikely to make the playoffs this year. You're a month into the season. One month into the season. And you just traded away your best player, your best asset, and didn't get top anything for him how, how does this make sense for the market like what's the thought process behind this there's just a there's a much deeper conversation here in regards to to the marlins it's been an embarrassment this is feels like the beginning of just another complete tear down and rebuild for the marlins and you have this guy that comes in and does an interview well and it doesn't i never played baseball and he's just a an analytical guy that comes in and is supposed to change this organization around and he comes out and is trading Luis Arise saying we're not going to make the playoffs and though sure 99.99% chance you're not going to make the playoffs uh, uh, sure but we're, it's it's the beginning of May you don't say that hold right on now. to him until the trade deadline get more for him than a number six prospect uh, and so it just feels like up oh, here we go again the Marlins are 
Look, we can talk about how they used to have a team of Christian Yelich, Giancarlo Stanton, Marcelo Zuna, JT Real Muto, and just kind of tore that all down. And then we can also talk about how they seemingly have a bright, a bright, you know, prospering GM come in the building and Kim Ang and gets to the playoffs with the team that nobody was expecting. And then you try and hire over her and she's like, I'm out. And it yeah. just feels, and, and now this, you have a team that, that yes, the rotation is, is quite injured this year and, and they didn't really have much of a chance after all that started happening. But now you're just getting rid of Luisa Rice, who had more control than just this year. I don't get it. It's frustrating. They, they, they suck. The Marlins suck. You, you trade away one of the now best pitchers in baseball yeah. and Pablo Lopez, who's, a, yeah. who's been a, a Cy Young contender for the past couple of years. You trade him away. The Twins extend him immediately mm -hmm. in return. And I actually felt at the time this was a beneficial deal for both sides. You get the reigning batting champion. The reigning AL batting champion comes to your team in exchange for Pablo Lopez. Well, they didn't extend him. No. He goes and wins a batting title for your team, your organization, and now a month in, uh, one year and one month into him being in your, on, on your team, you trade him away for not as much as, as you could have gotten, Good. in my opinion. And so it's just like now you look at it as a whole, uh -huh. and what'd they do? They traded Pablo Lopez, who's out competing for Cy Young Awards, That's crazy. for the names we just mentioned. Dylan Head, number six prospect for the Padres, a, a reliever that has underperformed and is in Double A, and you gave it, you gave them eight million dollars. Uh, it's an embarrassment. the The Miami Marlins right now are an embarrassment. I mean, we should have seen the writing on the wall. I think we did kind of start to see the writing on the wall, though, when Derek Jeter sold his stake in this team back in 2022. That was kind of like the beginning of like these weird moves, feeling that this organization wasn't going in the right direction. Yeah, he basically didn't say, but hinted at, like, I'm not allowed to do what I feel so needs what am to I be doing? done. And, the, you know, like, the moves that I need to make as, as GM of the team, the ownership's not allowing me. I, I, I can't do it, you yeah. know? And, and that's – it's obvious when you just step back and look at yeah, the Marlins as a whole over the past, I don't know, couple of decades, really? Yeah. Like – sad it's just yeah it's, it is sad it sucks okay. they're an embarrassment it, yeah it's it's bad all right let's move from a team to a division in our next overreaction statement the al central is not the biggest surprise of 2024 overreaction or not overreaction mm. Mm. <laughs> how we feeling um i'm gonna say I'm going to say this is an overreaction. It is, I yeah. think. I mean, who had who had the AL Central being as good as it is? Uh, they're the only division with all but one team over 500. Yep. That being the White Sox. By the way, playing I better mean, baseball. Very on brand for the White Sox. Yes. And to be expected. But other than that, <laughs> the Guardians are a surprise to everyone. One yeah. of the best teams in baseball to start the year. The Royals have been a surprise to everyone, including... I would say including myself. I and and that that's saying something because I was very high on them in the offseason they had and thought they would be much better. And yeah. to start the year, they've been really good and really fun. So I would say they've even outperformed my expectations of them, which were fairly high. The Tigers have been good. The Twins until Sunday hadn't lost since they brought in the Homer sausage to the team. They had won 12 games in a row. Their longest win streak since 1991. It's the sausage. <laughs> it's the Homer sausage. 12 games in a the row. Summer sausage. They finally lost on on Sunday, but yeah, I mean this team from from the top right now, you got Guardians, Royals, Tigers, Twins, I mean all like, of them. Who would have thought? I, not me. Exactly. And that me. is why I'm going to say this is an overreaction. I do think yeah. the biggest surprise so far of 2024 has to be the AL Central. You give me a, the whole division, I could say a bunch of those teams. I think the Guardians yeah. are a big surprise. I think the Royals are a surprise. I think the Tigers, thank God they can pitch because that offense is frustrating. <laughs> the Twins were a surprise in two different directions, right? Like, yeah. they sucked. What was going on there? Yeah. And then they needed a, a summer sausage to get them out of the sucking. And now they're back in 12 in a row. And Oh, I didn't even. Okay, Alex is Alex has the mind of a fifteen-year-old sometimes, but now they're back, and I I think this division is is certainly the most surprising and probably the most surprising story of the year so far. 
I agree. <laughs> I just I need to move on from that. This is a tough. This is a tough show you're, for you're Alex. Saying, you're doing it. it uh, I'm saying people's names. Nope. Nope. <clears throat> Moving on. Moving on to our what final. What do you mean no? It's true. Who are the names traded from the Padres no, to the no, Marlins? Don't do it again. We don't. No. Okay. We okay. are going to our final over reaction Monday. This is a positive. Okay. We are in the golden era of shortstops. Whew. Yeah. So to answer this, I feel like you really got to take a deep dive and look into the, you know, 1990 to 2000 area. That's okay. where the the other real argument comes into play. You got the the Derek Jeters, the A Rods, mm. the Cal Ripken Juniors, the Barry Larkins of the world, um, and then on the other end, you know, on on the back end of their careers, you yeah. still had the Ozzy Smith, the Alan Trammell. Um, but you know, in part of this, th- there's an argument that the most talented, the most talented and, and maybe best shortstop of all time is Alex Rodriguez. And so you add him in the middle of that name of that class, and it's like, well. How do you beat that? And then you start looking at what we're getting right now in oh, baseball. Yeah. And it's really cool. And you have the, the old guard, if you will, of guys that have been around and, and Trey Turner and Corey Seager and Francisco Lindor and, and Carlos Correa and, and Bo Bichette and, and now Mookie Betts playing shortstop. Yeah. And those, that's, not even where, that's not even what gets me most excited. It's these new guys. It's these young names. It's Ellie De La Cruz. It's Bobby Witt Jr. It's Gunnar Henderson. It's O'Neill Cruz. It's, it's Anthony Volpe. It's C.J. Abrams. And you have all these young stars, and it's very clear that right now the best position in Major League Baseball talent-wise is the shortstop position. So I'm going to say I think this new class – is outstanding. These new guys and these new shortstops are outstanding. And I think when you add some potential slash likely Hall of Famers Famers on the other end right now. And I think, I think Mookie's Mookie's the, the, the clear one that stands out. But again, Mookie just started playing shortstop and is that his career move? Probably not. But for this year, um, Carlos Correa, there's going to be a conversation. Lindor, Trey Turner, Corey Seager. Like, these are guys that are going to have co- the Hall of Fame conversations around them for sure. And then these new guys are just superstars with all the talent in the world. So I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say we are currently in the golden era for, for shortstops. I am really excited to watch the d- growth and development of these younger guys and to be able to still watch in seemingly like their primes. Like, Trey Turner's having a great year. Corey Seager... Last year, unbelievable. Second in, in the MVP voting. And Mookie, Mookie, odds on favorite to win the MVP so far this year. So I'm going to say yes. I, I absolutely think so. Yeah. I mean, as you said, I mean, shortstops is the best position right now in baseball. It has the most incredible athletes, and it's the perfect timing of these two generations of shortstops all crushing it at the same time. Now, we have team of the month coming up in just a bit. So obviously – the top of these shortstops will be on that list. But because shortstop was kind of the position of the month, I think there were so many incredible shortstops this month that won't make it on team of the month. I want to know if you had to rank your top five shortstops this month, what would it be? Yeah, I'm glad we're doing this. Because team of the month makes it tricky. It does. Because like all of these guys could potentially be on it. Yeah. So only one of these guys will be. Um, But yes, let's go top five Current shortstops, um, top five shortstops of 2024. Yeah, so far. so far. And I'll go at number five. I'm going Bobby Witt Jr. Mm. Um, really fun start to the year. Uh, still, the the speed is is off the charts. He's got the power numbers there. Uh, he's hitting 313 on the season with four homers, 19 RBIs, already 11 stolen bases. 29 runs scored about a month into the year. Dude. Plays great defense. We've we've talked to. Uh, Michael Waka, who basically said he's a, he's everything you could possibly want out of a superstar. Yeah. He is he's a superstar, and it's fun to watch him play. So Bobby Witt for me, I'll put it number five. Number four, I'm gonna go with Gunnar Henderson. The guy I'm wearing shirt. his shirt, yeah. by the way. Classic little Gunner, a little nod to Top Gun. I got the hair slicked back as a little you, nod to Top Gun. You were like full, as well. full in character right now. Um, Gunnar Henderson hitting 280 on the year with 10 homers. 24 RBI slugging, 925 on the year. 
Gunnar Henderson's a, a superstar. Yeah, he is. You know, I, I honestly He's think so good. if I hope the Orioles can sign him long term. And if they do. Start building that statue for Gunnar Henderson in, in Baltimore. Wow. I think he's going to be an all-time great there. Whoa. Um, so he's I go I go Bobby Witt five, Kay. Gunnar Henderson four. At number three, Trey Turner. Yeah, let's go Trey Turner. Uh, again, one of the guys that's been around for a while, a guy yeah. that has been constantly in MVP conversations throughout his career because he hits for power. He hits for average. He steals bases. And this year... After I, I'm telling you, we called it. I called it this year. What we saw at the beginning of his Philadelphia Phillies tenure was not Trey Turner. Mm -mm. And it wasn't him aging. It wasn't him regressing by any means. No. It was just a tough mental start to his career in Philadelphia. After a great WBC. <laughs> yes. But this is Trey Turner. Yeah. And for those not locked in on the Phillies and what they're doing and what Trey Turner is doing, he's hitting 343 on the year with three homers, 27 runs scored. He's got 10 stolen bases. The speed is still elite. The, the hit tool is still elite. This guy's a stud. He's a star, and he has been one of the best shortstops in baseball to start the year. Absolutely crushing. All right, top two are two of the most exciting players in baseball right now. At number two, Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie De La Cruz is why I wanted to do this today. Yeah. I could not put Ellie De La Cruz in my team of the month, yeah. but I felt like this show, basically the first Monday show of the new month, first mm -hmm. first episode, first Monday episode in May, it didn't feel right to have it and not be able to talk about Ellie De La Cruz. So number two for top shortstops in 2024 is Ellie. He's hitting 278. He's got eight homers. He's got 19 stolen bases. 19 RBIs this year is the breakout year of Ellie De La Cruz. This is what we imagined. This is what yeah. we thought. Everybody, not everyone, but people seemingly wrote him off after he was the top prospect in baseball, gets called up and struggles for a chunk of time for, for him being up. But why? why? Why would you ever write a guy like that off that has literally every tool that you could possibly want somebody to have? He has it. And you know, there's an argument for me for, for him being number one just because of everything that he's doing. Mm. Um, you know, obviously, 278 doesn't jump off the jump off the screen at you, but the eight homers, and, and then you start looking at, well, what would, what, what would these numbers be over the course of a full season? And yeah. then you look, and it's, oh, he's on pace for 40 homers and 100 stolen bases? <laughs> Is that the greatest season of all time? And that answer that would, would be, be yes. Yeah, that would be insane. <laughs> so, Madness. So I don't, it's just been an unbelievable season for Ellie. Uh, the guy's out there throwing 100 across the diamond uh, from shortstop. I love this guy. I love watching Ellie De La Cruz play baseball. And it just didn't feel right having a show where we didn't get to talk about Ellie on the first of the month where we're talking about the best in baseball. So, uh, so far, we'll go five Bobby Witt, four Gunnar Henderson, three Trey Turner, two Ellie De La Cruz. And number one, number one in our hearts. Whose heart? My heart. Mookie. <laughs> Mookie Betts absolutely crushing the start of this season. Yeah, so Mookie's number one. Uh, great start to the season. Uh, we will talk Mookie a good bit yeah. uh, throughout, the, throughout this episode. But, um, yeah, 360 on the year. <laughs> Six homers. I mean, the, guy, the guy's doing it all. And by the way, he's playing shortstop, yep. which he hasn't done in his career. So really, really cool. So five through one, we go. Bobby Witt Jr., Gunnar Henderson, Trey Turner, Ellie De La Cruz, and Mookie Betts for top five shortstops of 2024 so far. And just how do you not get excited about baseball when you look at this list? If you're watching and you see this in the wall right now, how can you see that and not be just absolutely pumped and thrilled for baseball, for the future of baseball, and for the era that we're in of shortstops And this right now. is why we're in the golden era Correct. of shortstops. Absolutely. I, you got like, I don't, I, I don't like calling them old. I'm like, like seasoned seasoned veterans and the young guns just absolutely crushing yeah. it together this is great and this leads us right into team of the month but we had to give our flowers to all of the incredible shortstops because that was the position of the month so for team of the month this is going to be from the korea series march 20th to the end of april okay that is where this window is coming from so everybody is aware so let's get started you got a problem with it Yellow Take it up ben. with me. Yellow ben. Opening Not day me. through the end of April. <laughs> Opening ben. month. 
Some months are longer than others. <laughs> Opening month in MLB is longer than others. That's all I got. Let's go. Let's do this. First team all of the right. month of the year. This is exciting. I know. So let's get started behind the plate with Salvador Perez. The ageless wonder. Salvi. He just keeps getting better and better and better. And he's, he's, I don't know, at this point, how do you not say he's the most underrated catcher in the game? His career has been unbelievable, and he just keeps getting better. 355, seven homers, 26 RBIs, and an OPS over 1,000 on the month plus we're going to we're just going to keep saying a month yeah, on yeah. the month an OPS over a thousand yes what a great great start to the season for Salvador Perez love the guy friend of the pod yeah one of the nicest one of the nicest human Coolest. beings one of the best yeah. guys in baseball how do you not love Salvi all right let's move up to first base Christian Walker from a guy that that might be the most underrated catcher in baseball to a guy that might be one of the most underrated first basemen in the game of baseball even though he was in the World Series last year. Christian Walker starting off hot. Seven homers in that opening month. 283, 22 RBIs, 20 walks already. This is a big year for him. He's going to – he's – the free agent class that we have coming up after this season is is massive. It's going to be a really good class, and Christian Walker is going to be a part of that. And and I think, I think he's flirting with that territory of getting paid – like an elite first baseman in the game of baseball, I'm excited to see what he Ooh. ends up uh, what he ends up getting. So Christian Walker, first base. Over at second base, your boy Jose Altuve. What a start to the year! Happy My for God, him. 345, seven homers, 16 extra base hits, and again an OPS over a thousand, 1.010. Jose Altuve just keeps just keep hitting. Just like they say in Finding Nemo, mm -hmm. just keep hitting. That's just what keep, that's what Jose Altuve does. The guy keep rakes. Just swimming. Just keeps. Okay, yeah, got that it. is it. Cool. There you I'm go. Back. Okay, <laughs> third base, Alec Bohm. Yeah, th we just talked about Alec. We Bohm did. He was my player. Week. I think he, he was my player of the week last week. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there, the the stretch that he has been on. The hits. So he hit 366 yeah. uh, in that first month. Four homers, 17 extra base hits. A 1.036 OPS. My favorite stat is that Alec Bohm went 11 games, 11 straight games, without having two back-to-back at-bats while making an out. For 11 straight games, did not make two consecutive outs at the plate. Oh, that's good. So he could get out, but then he was getting a getting single right after, walk, yeah. homer, or whatever, that next to bat. yeah, yeah. yeah. For 11 games. That's great. Did not have two consecutive it's at bats playing out. That is unbelievable. A, a good hit streak this year. I mean, yeah, he's my third baseman. All right. Over to shortstop. We were just talking about him. Guy of the month, man. Mookie Betts. Yeah, Mookie, uh, number one shortstop. This was admittedly, despite these numbers I'm about to read, admittedly tough to, yeah. to, not, to not have some of the other guys on here. But you start looking at 368. With six homers and 23 RBIs and an OPS of 1.101, and you think, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's he's going to be the shortstop on Team of the Month. Uh, what a start to the year for Mookie, playing a new position, and uh, just I have all the respect in the world for him to be uh, a Gold Glove outfielder, mm -hmm. uh, a damn good second baseman defensively, and to just say like. Oh, the team needs me to play shortstop. Oh, sure. Wherever you, you want second base, you want shortstop, you want I'll, outfield, just wherever yeah, you want. Just I'll, throw me there. I'll play I'm going to do great. And I'm going to be the best in the game. That's off to him for doing that because he's a superstar. I love it. He's a, uh, he's a former MVP. He does not have to, he does not have to no. change his position in the that's middle of his the career. Too, and I think that's huge, incredible. Huge shout out to him. Yeah. I didn't even, like, you don't even think about that. Like, just like the status that he is, you could be like, eh. He's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay, now we're moving to the outfield. Three outfielders, not by position, not in any specific order. First outfielder, Jerkson Profar. You heard that right. <laughs> you all heard that right. <laughs> the first of three outfielders on team of the month is Jerkson Profar. Now, for the first month plus of the year, hit 318, four homers, 19 RBIs, slugged 917. And he's only continued to be better, by the mm -hmm. way, over these last you know, the, this last week, the, yeah. the first week of May, he's been unbelievable. But one of the best players in baseball to start the year. Offensively, he's been he's been incredible. And uh, the the 917 OPS is is just something you, you can't bat an eye at. So uh, you can look at some of the names in the outfield and say, yeah, this guy's been really good. But 
I know it's not the biggest name. I know it's not the most exciting name in the world, but that is the point of doing this weekly and monthly is being able to shout out guys that absolutely deserve it. And the best hitter in 2024 on the San Diego Padres, the two best hitters. Who would have thought this? Two months ago, who would have thought this? The two best hitters for the San Diego Padres in 2024 here on March 6th are Jerks and Profar and Luisa Rise. Nobody would have seen that coming. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, man. I, they're a playoff team. Calling it. Called it before the season. Okay, off to our second outfielder, your boy Kyle Tucker. Yeah, really good start to the year. Um, he's been flirting with that 30-30 number for a, a couple times in his career, and I, I think he's – Man, I'm, I'm hopeful he can get it done. He's been a homer away before. He's been like a stolen base away before, and, and now he needs to put it all together. But so far this year, he's hitting 300. He has seven homers early on in the year through the first month, 20 RBIs, an OPS of 967. Kyle Tucker, Houston Astros, they got a couple guys on this team of the month. They are, although they are not where they want to be in the standings, mm. uh, having Jose Altuve and Kyle Tucker on this list, they have certainly helped that offense. All right, and the last outfielder, the New York superstar, Juan Soto. Juan Soto, the face of the New York Yankees, if you will. Wow, that was fast. 325. <laughs> the New York Yankees I, are not where they are if they were not for oh, Juan not Soto Oh, not at all. This no, year. he is the face he, of the Judge team right now. Aaron Judge has been not good. Like, Juan Soto has saving grace. put the team on his back in the first month of yeah. being a New York Yankee. 325, eight homers, 25 RBIs, but and an thriving. OPS over 1,000, 1 1.019 on the month mm -hmm. to start the year. So that makes the outfield jerks and profile, Kyle Tucker and Juan Soto did want a, a quick little shout out to Mike Trout. Yeah. Uh, Trout was sitting at, is sitting at 10 homers, mm -hmm. uh, was tied for the league lead or tied for the league league and homers. Um, but I, you know, really was think he got hurt at the end of the month was hitting 220. So that OPS is up there. Yeah. I, I really thought about having him on team of the month, but uh, I couldn't put Mike Trout over a guy like, Jerks and profile to start the year. I could. Yeah. All right. Let's move to our designated hitter, Shohei Otani. Ah, uh, of course. Yeah. Of course, it's Shohei. And there are. It was close. If if I'm being honest, there's a there's an argument for Marcelo Zuna. There's an argument for Shohei Otani. But if you're new to this show, you know who wins that argument. His name's Shohei Otani, and he hit 336. <laughs> I'm glad with you're being honest. Seven about homers, it. <laughs> 19 RBIs, 14 doubles, a 1.017 OPS. But seriously, when, when I talk about that, if Marcelo Zuna deserved to be on Team of the Month, I would have put him. And yeah. he was fantastic, and he's been one of the best hitters in baseball to start the year. But so has Shohei. And, and what he's been doing, and those 14 doubles, and, and OPS again over 1,000. And I, I know this is through April 30th, but to start May, he's been in fuego. He's yeah. homered and back. He homered on Sunday. He homered on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is, he's been heating up since that – slow ish I mean slow couple of games to start the year so shout out Shohei first team of the month of 2024 and Shohei Otani is of course the DH we love to see it let's get to the starting pitcher who might be the best free agent signing we have seen so far Shota Imanaga I I'm so happy for I him. love this guy I'm I so have really gotten to okay we'll start with the number okay. he's four and oh uh, 27 and two thirds innings pitched, a 0 0.98 ERA, 28 strikeouts in those 27 and two thirds innings, only three walks to 28 strikeouts, and uh, 181 OBA on base uh, average uh, against him. So, really good. Really, really good. I've also gotten to watch a lot of his interviews and just gotten to yeah. know him as a, as a person. Not personally, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you pick up on things. And he's hysterical. I That's love this guy. He did an interview the other day. He came off the mound, huge game, pitched really well. And people were asking him, like, what's been, uh, reporters said, like, what's been either your favorite thing about America or mm -hmm. your most, uh, the, the toughest. Oh, this is what it was. Okay. It was a baseball question. He comes off the mound and it's like, you've been really good. What's been the, the toughest thing for you to adapt to over in, in the U.S.? Yeah. And he said, the fact that you can turn right on red oh. at stoplights. <laughs> and I Dude, was like, that's tough. That, I like this Like, guy. no one thinks about that. Like, driving in another country is terrifying. Yeah. It's terrifying. Love this guy. Oh, uh, and then great. he was asked uh, just other questions. When he was pitched in New York, he was like, oh, I recognize this from, Spider -Man. from Spider Man. Yeah. I mean, he's just great. It's Everything so cute. he says comes off either, either like hysterical or like, 
I, I, I just, I love the guy. Really Shota pure. Imanaga. What a great yeah. start to his career with the Cubbies, and what a great start for him and, and the U.S. And, and Major League Baseball as a whole. And I'm happy to put him as my starting pitcher. Same. Okay, wrapping up. Team of the month with uh, Mason Miller, relief pitcher. The most dominant pitcher in baseball is Mason Miller. 13 and a third innings pitched, eight saves for the Oakland A's, by the Dude. way. Dude. Eight saves for him? Who would have thought the A's would even have eight wins at this point in the Who year? Who would have thought but they would be above the Astros? Alex loves that little <laughs> nugget. Absolutely loves it. Hold on to it while you can, because by the time we reach uh, June, you will not be able to say that anymore. Yeah, we'll so keep see. on saying it while yeah, you can. 28, five games strike behind him. 28 strikeouts in 13 and a third innings pitched. 28. Only two earned runs. Seven hits given up on the year, only four walks to 28 strikeouts. Just dominance. That is pure dominance. So let's go around the team. That is at catcher, Salvador Perez, Christian Walker at first, Jose Altuve at second, Alec Bohm at third, Mookie Betts at short. In the outfield, Jerks and Profar, Kyle Tucker, Juan Soto at DH, Shohei Otani on the mound, starting pitcher, Shota Imanaga. And my closer, again, the most dominant pitcher in Major League Baseball, throws 104 miles an hour, Ooh. Mason Miller. Now, there's a lot of players on here that had one heck of a start to the season. But who is your player of the month? It has to be Mookie. Mm -hmm. It has to be Mookie Betts for the start to the yeah. year he's had. 368, six homers, an OPS of 1.101 on the season. Uh, again, this is... This is all encompassing for me with Moogie. These numbers are, are great, but all of these guys have great numbers, including other shortstops that if, if it weren't for Mookie or if it weren't for the position they're in, would be all over, the, all over this team of the month, including Ellie, a guy like Ellie that's putting up great numbers, and, and Gunnar Henderson's of the world, and Trey Turner's. It's been unbelievable, but none better than Mookie. But when I say it's all encompassing to me, I don't want people to gloss over the fact that we're talking Major League Baseball. This is the fastest the sport is played at a level that you can't comprehend. Major League Baseball, everything speeds up. You have Mookie Betts going from right field to second base to shortstop. The premier position on the baseball field, shortstop. And is he going to win a gold glove this year at shortstop? No. But the fact that he is out there doing it and putting more and more and more work into his craft and becoming uh, a, a decent fielding shortstop while putting up the numbers offensively that he has speaks volumes to the player he is, to the work ethic he has. And I've been, I've been pumped to watch the start of the year. I, I went to you know the, the first Dodgers game I went to, that opening night, the night game, hit a homer. And yeah. it's like I've, it's – He's one of those guys right now. They have a, a couple in the lineup. He's one of those guys that you feel like it's an honor to go to the stadium and watch him play, to be yeah. honest. And that sounds like corny and cliche, but like you show up and you're like, and, and Mookie's hitting a homer in his first at bat. It's like that, this is, this is all time stuff. This is, is really cool to see him doing that. So Mookie Betts is my player of the month. Alex, who on earth is your player of the month? You got a guess? I do have a guess. Yeah. And it is Jose my, Altuve. Yeah, oh, my player of the month is also oh, Mookie okay. Betts. You guys, how can you not? The start he has had to this season is just so incredibly impressive. I mean, it's out of this world. He's also making my NL MVP pick look absolutely insane because I was getting laughed at for saying he would have a batting average around, what, like 330, and he's batting 368. The first month of the season, I mean, his numbers, you just went through all of them, are just mind-blowing. What he's able to do, and just to remind you again, as Ben said, playing a new position, the hardest position on the field, and he is a superstar who is willing to do whatever it takes for this team to win. And the Dodgers are absolutely clicking on all cylinders right now. They are the best team in baseball, and it's all led by their leadoff man, Mookie Betts. He is leading by example, and it is just an absolute joy to watch what this guy is capable of. Like, we're, we're getting a front row seat to it. It's so fun. I mean, they just absolutely destroyed the Braves, swept the Braves. Like, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Just wanted to throw that one in there real quick before we get to our next segment. Which is what? Uh, power rankings. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get to power rankings, you guys. Starting with number 10, 
They are currently first in the AL West, the Mariners. The Mariners are 19 and 15. They have a pitching staff that you just do not want to, no. to see. You don't want to face any of them. They go into Houston. Really, they played a, a really good series, started off well for the Astros, and then they come back and win in dominant fashion on Saturday and then come from behind and, and tie it late in the game and then go ahead off Hayter in, in the ninth inning and then end up winning the series there in Houston. And it's because of this, the pitching staff. They have been, since early, early April, been the best pitching staff in, in the game of baseball. Their numbers are off the charts. Logan Gilbert and George Kirby have been fantastic. Luis Castillo hasn't even really been that good for so to, to start once, the year. So imagine and, once he is. And there's an argument that he's the best pitcher of the bunch when, yeah. when right. So, yeah, and, and again, George Kirby and, and Logan Gilbert have continued to take steps forward. And I'm, I don't know if I'm still saying Luis Castillo is the best on that staff. But he has the potential to be up there. Bryce Miller's been really good. They're, they're getting Brian Wu back soon. Emerson Hancock's Woo. been serviceable. I mean – this whole rotation, yeah. top to bottom, really, really, really good. And then all you need is just do enough out of the offense. Cal Raleigh, a massive homer off Josh Hader in the ninth on, on Sunday. Cal Raleigh, a homer in, in back-to-back nights. Mm -hmm. it, it just feels like with this team, do they have a good one through nine of the lineup? No. And it's frustrating to watch them sometimes. Uh -huh. But it just feels like if they stay close enough – they got a guy one through nine in that lineup that's capable of hitting the ball out of the yard and have yep. a timely homer, and it feels like they've been doing that more often than night, more often than than not. So, Seattle Mariners uh, not ranked last week. Back on here at nineteen and fifteen. Number nine, also not ranked last week, but after going on a 12-game win streak, the Minnesota Twins. Maybe the Mariners were ranked last week. Maybe they were a ten. I don't know. Mariners they were, a, were 10. a ten. But I digress. That's okay. On to the Twins. Here at number nine. Uh, they were not ranked previously because to start the year, they sucked. But then you win 12 <laughs> games in a row, and that's going to get you on team of the or on power rankings. Yeah. Because I, I thought the Twins would win the AL Central. I mm -hmm. still believe, yeah, I still believe the Twins are going to win the AL okay. Central. And all they needed was a 12 game win streak and, and the summer sausage to get them out of the, the cellar of this division. So, Twins are back. They are the most talented team in the AL Central. There are, there's a lot more talent this year. The gap has narrowed mm -hmm. in that division, but I do believe the Twins are the most talented. They've dealt with injuries early on. Things are starting to click for them at the right time. Twins at nine. All right. At number eight, down one spot. Atop, though, the NL Central, the Brewers. Yeah, just a really a good series with the, the Cubbies, and it all it yeah. came down to, to Sunday. Cubs end up winning that series. The Brewers are 20 and 13. Uh, but, you know, to me yeah they lost that series so they go to eight and uh and number seven yeah, is the team spot, that, that beat the them so i just flip-flopped yeah. them and if you don't understand well, the flip-flop how about you just look at the, the last couple games and the cubs win that series mm -hmm. it was close they were good battles but the cubs have now moved up ahead of the brewers for me in power rankings to number seven on this list uh again up that one spot playing really good baseball 21 and 14 Baseball is fun in Chicago right now. And yeah. I, I'm actually really impressed with this team because they're doing it with, without Justin Steele, without Cody Bellinger, without Seiya Suzuki. I mean, sometimes that's when teams, like, rise to the occasion. Your star guys are out, and it's like, come on, guys, do it for them. We can do this. Yeah, and they've – look, if you were to tell me that Justin Steele is going to get hurt early in the year and that Cody Bellinger would have to go on the 10-day IL at a point and miss – maybe a, about a month. Seiya Suzuki missed a, a chunk of time. They're going to get those guys back around the same time. It's looking, it's looking like end-ish of May they should be back. But still, the fact that they have done what they have d done <laughs> without them <laughs> is, going, is impressive. Going. The fact that they've done what they've done they've with done what, what they've done. What they done, done what they do. No else has done what they got to do. Is that number six, the Guardians? Woo. Yeah, still leading that, still leading the AL Central. The most surprising story of the 2024 season. They're 22 yeah. and 12, uh, and they just keep. It's timely hitting. It's good pitching. It's good. Uh, it's good out of the bullpen. Emmanuel Classe in the back end is is lights out. Josh Naylor has been really good. Big timely homers for that team. Jose Ramirez is a superstar. The Guardians are good. The Guardians are fun, and uh, we'll see. We might end up getting AL Central. I, I would have thought the Twins. I thought it would be closer. Maybe not run away with it this year. Didn't have the Guardians being a contender. 
but I did have it being closer with the Twins and, and Tigers and, and maybe the, the Royals creeping in. Now you got four teams that are all, I think, I think going to be pretty good throughout the course of this season. So Guardians right now are the cream of the crop in that division at number six. Okay, moving to the top five, holding strong at that number five spot, the New York Yankees. Yeah, the Yankees are being being led by by Juan Soto. I do not know where they superstar. would be without him. New They're York superstar. 23 and 13 again. They were at 5 last week. I'm keeping them put right here at 5 again. So, New York Yankees. Talent, uh they have done more than enough with with Garrett Cole out. I don't know how much longer I've heard he's, you know, right. ramping back up. He's throwing off a mound, you know, could be could be back Late this month, could be next month. Who, who knows with, with Garrett Cole? But mm. the fact that they're 23 and 12 or 23 and 13 and he hasn't pitched this yeah. year, Yankees fans should be excited. Thank you, Juan Soto. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Okay, moving to number four, the biggest move of the week, down three spots after getting swept by the Dodgers, the Braves. Yeah, I, I, I have my concerns with the Braves. I still do believe they're great. My concerns come with Spencer Strider. That, to be honest with you, now you're, everybody moves up in that rotation. Is Max Fried capable of being an ace? Yes. Is Chris Sale or Charlie Morton capable of being a two? Well, that's where the question marks start coming in. You'd much rather your question marks start coming in at, at number three. when If you can have Spencer Strider and Max Fried as a one and two, that's great. But then you have guys with question marks. Charlie Morton getting a little older. Is How's he going to do? Is 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 he going to get injured? Is he going to stay healthy? Chris Sale, the ultimate. Is he going to stay healthy? Mm. Can he be good for us all year long? So question marks in the rotation. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, they, I definitely had to move them down, move them down yeah. three spots. But, you know, couldn't they did get swept. They're 20 and 12. I still do believe they're one of the better teams in baseball, but they lost to a, a team that is also towards the top of the power rankings. So couldn't be this crazy monumental move. But there was also a, a, another team in the same division that also played better. We'll get to all that yeah. in a little bit. Yeah, okay, so let's get to number three. Down one spot, the Orioles. Yeah, the Orioles end up winning on, on Sunday, which was huge, but mm -hmm. they're 23 and 11. I still really like what they're doing. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they're starting to get healthier in that rotation. John yeah. Means back. Kyle Bradish coming back. I mean, this is huge for them. That lineup is so much fun. So the Orioles have been what top five all year long they've been uh, in that one to three range or two to three two to four range all year long and they're staying right here they're 23 and 11 they're winning the AL East currently leading the AL East mm -hmm. new ownership comes in by the way I loved this yeah, absolutely love this you never see this new owner comes in the Orioles beat the Yankees in a series guy <laughs> takes to Twitter and tweets man what a fun series I know it's early in the year but shout out to the Orioles we're now in first place Travel safely back to New York, Yankees. <laughs> I just loved it. I loved it. I love everything going on there uh, in, in Baltimore. So 23 and 11, they're here at third. It's so good. All right. At number two, up two spots and currently first in the NL East, the Phillies. That's right. That's right. The Phillies. Phillies, 23 and 11, playing unbelievable baseball. They are the Sunday night baseball game there against the Giants. So we'll see how, how that one finishes out. Again, we record on, on Sunday evening. So... I, look, I, I know injuries have happened with the Braves, and I know it's very early in the year, but this is my World Series winner. They're yes. playing great, and I did say, let's not all just chalk up the Braves to win that NL East like, the, like this is a guarantee. This Phillies team that often puts it together in, in September and then plays well in October, if we can see their full potential all year long, they have every bit the talent to compete with the Atlanta Braves in that division, and right now... We see a new leader in the NL East. Bum, 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 where they belong. Up two spots, the Dodgers at number one. I wasn't <laughs> even there yet, Alex. <laughs> Pump the brakes. You, you led me there. No. I thought that's what I you were didn't. doing. I didn't. I said we have a new leader in the NL oh. East, and that is the Philadelphia Phillies. I was too the excited. Phillies are rolling and are here <laughs> at number two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Alex is throwing things. She's very flustered. At number one, the Dodgers. They're 23 and 13. They're really good. The offense is clicking. Everyone's firing up, firing right now in that top of the lineup. They just swept the Braves in a big, biggest series of the year. Braves at Dodgers. 
Dodgers sweep them at home. Just massive, massive series. They dominated one of, if not the, if not the best team in baseball, one of the top three teams in baseball in the Atlanta Braves. Swept them at home. Dodgers are the best team in baseball. Uh, so that's the top ten. We go Mariners, Twins, Brewers, Cubs, Guardians, Yankees, Braves, Orioles, Phillies, Dodgers. Are you good? <laughs> I'm doing my best. Your hair is just like put me in like. Don't the blame best my hair. <laughs> Don't blame when my I, hair. I've just been staring at it the whole show. <laughs> Shout out to Ruth for that. Let's get a good anyway. close up on my hair to end this in this show because that does it, my friends. I'm off to Italy. Hope you hope you all enjoyed this Monday episode of Flipping Bats. We have oh. Adam Wainwright, oh. uh, new co-worker here at Fox, coming on on oh. Wednesday. We talked Cardinals, we talked World Series, we talked Albert Pujols, we talked working at Fox and getting in the booth. It was honestly a really, really fun conversation with him. So make sure you check that out. Uh, that, again, comes Wednesday. That does it for this Monday episode. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify <laughs> Podcasts, wherever. You can also watch everything we do on Spotify, on YouTube, and follow us on TikTok. We put a lot of really cool stuff out there. Maybe we'll put the close zoom in on my hair on TikTok. That'll, that'll do really well. But that does it for this Monday episode, my friends. Enjoy the week. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday with Adam Wainwright. That does it. Remember, until next time, find your bat and flip it. Peace. <laughs> it's like going weed. <laughs>